Okay, I am really honored and pleased to, to speak on such an event on um, Samsung's 60th birthday conference. And uh, I think we know each other for almost 40 years, I would estimate. And I always wondered why uh, Samsung was such a visible personality in our community, in our scientific community. I decided one of the reasons is that not only he, he knows how to take care of the people, but he also knows how to involve them into various adventures. <laughs> so here, we, in, on this picture which I took uh, uh, in Châtelet, Théâtre de Châtelet, uh, he gives a talk on the Dao art event, where he was one of the main instigators, one of the main persons uh, having organized it. And he gives scientific talk and uh, he invited also us, asking to give really scientific talks. And uh, only during the talk, little by little, I understood that we were just uh, some exhibits on this exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was quite an experience. Yeah, yeah. So this is one of adventures, little adventures in my life, <laughs> which was interesting. Okay, and uh, as concerns the science, we sort of always worked with um, uh, Samson in parallel worlds, uh, which were very close to each other. The same keywords, uh, uh, gauge theory, string theory, uh, conformal theories, integrability, matrix models, but sort of Rarely discussed, unfortunately. But it's Exxon Zuber. It's Exxon Zuber, I remember very well. Uh, yeah, I just mentioned the pro this problem and Samson solved it in a few weeks, I guess, the correlator in the Exxon Zuber integral. But the life is not over. Maybe one day we'll <laughs> have some collaborations. Okay, so I will speak about the subject which I'm working on, like for for four and a half last years. Um, uh, this is the conformal fishnet theory, CFT. This is the abbreviation which you know uh, in any dimension. Um, so uh, the main question why it was interesting to me was the following. That say N equals four super young mills theory is an example of four dimensional CFT with phenomenologically very interesting properties. Uh, it has it is very well defined, it is strongly interacting CFT, well defined on all scales from infrared to um, UV, and also having a rich moduli space. Uh, and uh, this is quite a, uh, quite a standard phenomenon for supersymmetric world, but unfortunately supersymmetry is not observed in nature so far. And the que interesting question is, do we have non-supersymmetric CFTs uh, with these properties, you say, in four dimensions? Um, one example which I started studying in detail was uh, a gamma deformed N equals four, gamma deformation of super young mills. <coughs> Susie is completely broke, uh, de de destroyed, uh, but if you want to keep it conformal, unfortunately, the unitarity is broken. So you have to pay by this or that way for, uh, for conformality. And also, um, uh, what is nice in this theory, it's integrable even after gamma deformation in Hoft limit, in large n limit. Uh, so we can calculate the spectrum of anomalous dimensions uh, by the method which is now called quantum spectral curve. Um, I will speak about it a little bit. Um, and, um, but integrability is very much related to ADS-CFT ADS duality, um, but uh, both stay very mysterious. We don't have any proof, even in this sort of emblematic example of ADS-CFT, we don't have any proof of either integrability or uh, ADS-CFT correspondence. I mean, the proof which would be uh, even physical proof, not even mathematical. Uh, so I wanted to find some simplified example, maybe some limit in this theory, which uh, 
where the integrability becomes uh, mm, uh, manifest. And uh, well, just, uh, this joke I want to make, I'm sorry. Um, once I was giving a lecture at the Newton Institute, and Alan Kohn, who, who worked here, Alan Kohn, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, was organizer and sitting in the first row. And I said exactly like that. There are uh, physical problems, mathematical problems. He stand up and he stopped me and he said, Samson, I tell you, the statement is either correct or wrong. And this physical and mathematical just get it up, get it out from your mind. Okay. Is it correct or wrong? And we know the statement is correct. Okay, but we don't understand the reasons for it, which is already a deeper question, yes? Uh, really, uh, we don't understand deep reasons for the theory to be integrable for any coupling. Uh, okay, then um, the proposal was to mm, a special double scaled, double scaling limit in equal, N equals 4 Young Mills, uh, which combines strong gamma deformation with imaginary parameters and um, also weak, weak coupling. And the integrability will become manifest. Namely, uh, the outcome of this limit is this fishnet CFT, which I will, the talk is, a, which, uh, is the main subject of my talk. And it appeared that it, domina it dominates by regular fishnet planar graphs. Uh, mm, so, sort of this Feynman graph, you, you take fishnet. Uh, regular square lattice, uh, you put propagators, say, between points, na neighboring points, it will be x j minus xk to the power dimension over 2, and you integrate in each vertex. So it's like a, a fragment of big Feynman graph, which is called fishnet graph, after the Malochikov's paper, who showed actually that this, as statistical mechanical system, this is an integrable model. And uh, the underlying integrability is uh, S or D, uh, com, uh, 2 comma D conformal spin chain, corresponding to conformal symmetry of this graph. Okay, but um, uh, let's start now uh, uh, <coughs> explaining how this model, how the fishnet CFT can be obtained. And first we have to gamma twist the young meals. The, uh, Lagrangian of Young Mills is presented here. It contains uh, three scalar fields, uh, complex scalar fields, three complex fermions, uh, gluina, gluons, and uh, with somewhat very familiar interactions here. Um, uh, you have commutators of modulo squared of FISC, here commutator with fermion, so there are commutators everywhere. And um, what is the gamma twist? You, since all these fields are matrices, <laughs> and by and color matrices, uh, under trace, so the order of the fields is important. And uh, you simply uh, assign a particular factor to each order of the field. Say if you have order A, B for two fields, A and B, then if you interchange them, you get a factor QAB, which is exponent of anti-symmetric combination of, uh, of charges, uh, of R symmetry of this field. Uh, you have SO6 symmetry, R symmetry, so you get here these Cartan charges, and gamma mu is a parameter, uh, R3 twists parameters. So you have three more couplings here. And of course, ah, what the, pract the practical way to implement it here is simply to uh, substitute commutators by Q commutators uh, by this formula. So this Q factor appears in this way. And um, then you simply just write letter Q at each, at each commutator. And of course, this uh, procedure breaks completely um, R symmetry uh, to U1 to the cube. I mean, uh, so 6 to u1 to the cube. But the conformal <coughs> symmetry stays there, and supersymmetry is completely broken, of course. So, so, sorry. So, so do I understand correctly? So this deformation, you, basically that's a Cartan of your symmetry group which gets quantized. Yes. 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 Uh, 
And then the rest of the symmetry group, like, that does not get quantized, just the Cartan. Yes, you just point a vector uh, with this um, with these coordinates uh, in R group, so <coughs> in R symmetry group, so it destroys R symmetry up to the rotations around uh, Cartan generators, and that's what you have. But conformal symmetry in principle stays. Um, and if you tune well the parameters, which um, uh, you get. Uh, still integrable, non-supersymmetric logarithmic CFT. Uh, I'll speak about param new parameters. There will be so-called double trace uh, couplings here. Uh, I'll discuss it. But now, what is uh, this my uh, double scaling limit, um, fishnet limit? Uh, I send coupling the Hoft uh, yeah, that uh, uh, Young Mills. Hoft coupling to zero, then the parameter gamma, this parameter gamma, to i infinity. So in fact, uh, instead of uh, uh, unitary factor, I get some big or small q. Um, and the product of these two factors is fixed. I call this new couplings xij. Um, so in this limit, interesting things happen, for example, from the commutator, you see already that if q goes, for example, to infinity, then 1 over q to 0, you drop one of the terms of each commutator. That's more or less what happens. You drop halves of all these commutators, or sometimes all commutators, for example. Uh, gluina goes away, uh, decouples, uh, the gauge fields go away, because there is weak coupling, but nothing to enforce the strength of gluon interaction. So you stay with three fermions and three bosons, essentially, and with some of their interactions. I show you now the whole action, which, as it um, comes after the, after the double scaling limit. Um, so you have uh, bosons, three bosons, three fermions, complex. Uh, and then you have these kind of interactions which now are chiral interactions, non-unitary, because the whole deformation is non-unitary. Uh, and in, you have some Yukawa terms uh, of this kind. So it's Yukawa plus phi 4? Uh, Yukawa plus phi 4, but in, with very particular, uh, very, very particular orders of fields under the trace, so that they become uh, sort of chiral. And here I discuss the uh, underlying Feynman graphs, the perturbation theory. And already it shows a remarkable lattice structure, regular lattice structure, not completely regular. So it consists of um, three types of lines, three colors of fermions or bosons, green, black, and red here, uh, which cross each other. Uh, the lines can move, so you can take this line, move it uh, through the crossings, etc. So it changes graphs. But that's the only way to change anything. Ah, and also you put dotted, some dotted pieces of these lines which correspond to fermions and solid which corresponds to bosons. And also, and then everything is fixed because if you have, for example, the crossing of, say, somewhere the crossing of bosonic and fermionic line, you have to disentangle it in a very, say, this thing, in a very particular way by uh, Yukawa couplings. So everything is uh, now uh, unique. Once you draw this skeleton graph, it's a unique way that you decorate it by, due to chirality, it's a unique way. Say so here it's this picture. So interestingly, this lattice system is another integrable system that we know for sure because the whole Young Mills, n equals 4 Young Mills gamma deformed is integrable and as Samson says, uh, it's either f false or wrong, but we have many, many um, uh, proofs that it's, it's actually uh, oh, false or true, and th this is true. <laughs> anyway, this is a strange lattice system with sort of, which has some dynamics. You can move these lines, but otherwise 
It should be an integrable spin chain. Of what kind, we don't know. But if we stay with only one coupling, say, suppose we put Xi1, Xi2 to zero, stay only Xi3, then all, all fermions go away because they have such couplings. Uh, uh, then th these interactions go away, you have only this interaction and you have uh, the model which is actually f the, fish, uh, the fishnet model. Uh, uh, it contains two out of three scalar fields and this interaction phi 1 bar phi 2 bar phi 1 phi 2. Uh, now what is the perturbation theory? You have uh, two types of propagators for phi 1 and phi 2. They are conformal of course. It's massless. It's in four dimensions so far. They are mass, uh, massless propagators, and the only type of the vertex which is which has specific chirality. If you draw it by double lines, as Hoft taught us, then you cannot. You should just draw it on the plane without uh, turning around, and then the arrows which go from phi to phi bar, phi one to phi one bar, phi two to phi bar. For example, from if you go from blue to red, you go clockwise. And the vertex which corresponds to anti-clockwise orientation is actually missing here due to this specific limit. So it shows already that the, the model is not unitary, but then uh, once you accept the non-unitary world, you are in the paradise because the only graphs which are left are precisely this kind of fishnet graphs. You simply draw, for example, a, a piece of a big graph <laughs> And you cannot reorient this. Uh, you have only this kind of structure. If you try to turn, for example, this line of propagators to, to turn back, you immediately encounter this kind of vertex. So this is with appropriate boundary conditions. You can only draw regular plano lattice. And in the big graphs, it will be always this regular um, square lattice. So this more complicated picture becomes a uh, much simpler one. And all these mess of n equals 4 Young-Mills diagrams uh, goes away. You have these nice, um, nice graphs. There are very few of these graphs in each other, sometimes 0, sometimes 1, sometimes 2. Depends on, of course, on the physical quantity, on the boundary of these graphs. The, the, the boundary is defined by physical quantity. And uh, it's remarkable that, like in Young-Mills, uh, the coupling psi squared doesn't run. The beta function is 0. But, uh, for example, uh, this uh, uh, and this fact is important because, for example, uh, you can see that uh, you have no mass renormalization. Uh, this is the graph which renormalizes the mass, but uh, of course you have one uh, chiral vertex, but another one just by topology should, by, should be anti-chiral. So you discard this graph and uh, this uh, property propagates, of course, to higher orders. Uh, and but it's well known that you gener uh, generate uh, so-called double uh, uh, double trace vertices of this kind. For example, this graph is not planar, but trace trace still survives even in the large n limit. Like n trace is of the same order as trace trace, so we have to include this graph. Uh, sorry, just just one point. Considering this dynamical fishnet picture, yeah. that could, it, could you have a dynamical analog for the integrable spin chain structure with the, uh, with the dynamics on the sides? I could, but I don't know what are these spins. You mean about, you speak about this? Yes, yes. If I can say a space of the running couplings and then the better function would correspond to something. No, here, uh, once you have a graph, I mean, this couplings, uh, you, you speak about double trace couplings or? Yes. Uh, they appear only in very specific graphs, which can be cut into two uh, uh, along this vertex, which double double trace vertex. Otherwise, they don't survive. They they actually uh, rather uh, serve the, uh, here as regularizers, in some sense. I have no time to speak about it, but uh, uh, the only thing I wanted to mm, to, to say that. A careful choice of these couplings leads to the critical point and the theory stays conformal. 
It's true also for the full n equals four, gamma deformed n equals four. You generate these kind of terms, but you can tune to to the critical point which, where the theory stays conformal and integrable. Infrared divergences? Uh, ultraviolet divergences. It, it creates, of course, uh, you have ultraviolet divergences, but they sort of regularize them, and then everything looks nice at the end. Um, okay, then actually you have to add them, of course. All these alphas depend on xi. It's lines, critical lines, not just critical couplings, xi dependent couplings. And what is interesting, this theory even has uh, a space of flat moduli. Um, uh, how does it happen? Uh, so as usual, we can uh, give an average to each of two fields, uh, vacuum average, and look at the uh, <coughs> fluctuations. Then the effective action for fluctuations, uh, the effective action will contain mm, the original action, depending on these averages, and then plus one loop correction, <coughs> where M is uh, the mass matrix, it's just corresponding to one loop contribution with mass, this mass matrix is inserted. Uh, L here, of course, contains both single trace and double trace terms. Then it happens that actually there are no other corrections here. Uh, this is the exact, the action here is exact. Uh, the one loop Coleman Weinberg potential, it's called one uh, Coleman Weinberg potential, uh, appears to be exact, one loop exact. Uh, you can see it, for example, trying to draw other loops of two kinds of fields, but you see the circles should cross each other both in chiral and antichiral direction. If you have a chiral allowed vertex, then there will be a Another one, antichiral, which is forbidden for planar graph. So, so is, is the sign correct for Coleman? Is it there are two two cases, kind of, right? Upside down Coleman wine bar and and the right one. <laughs> I wouldn't remember. I hope I hope so. I hope so. One, one I hope is so. Like this and another is like, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should. I should warn that everything is complex already, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you are in a complex world, so this question doesn't make sense. <laughs> but um, okay, but it's a nice. The game is still nice. Uh, so the flat vacuum must <laughs> obey, of course, the condition that you are the, at the extremum. Again, for a complex vacuum, it could be minimum, maximum, whatever. Um, and I can give, one can give examples of such vacuum. For example, for phi one field you take zero. For phi two you can, you take uh, a diagonal matrix such that uh, its trace of square is zero. The matrix is complex, so you can of course easily fulfill this condition. Then you get this factorized mass matrix. And uh, for example, for the choice when you have this kind of breaking of the symmetry, you have four similar eigenvalues which repeat many times, n over four times. Uh, you can you impose unimodularity on these guys. You impose that classical uh, uh, Coleman-Weinberg is zero, and you also impose that quantum part. This is zero, which is this condition. Then you find a nice solution. Uh, so always you, ca you can find a, always a solution. So somehow this theory inherits the vacua, and one can actually show that the vacua of original n equals four gamma deformed young mills are continuously connected to this vacua. Uh, so there was of course kinetic term also, right? Uh, kinetic term, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, it gave this part, for example. Yes, no, you integrate no, it over delta phi. So action also has kinetic term. Okay, you consider. Uh, you, you do this decomposition, you start integrating, you look at Feynman graphs, yeah. and all of them disappear. So uh, after all, you, you so found no the full right? effective action. Later, you can expand around this effect. No, no, I meant that does effective action has a term d mu phi square, yeah. derivative term in phi. Phi is a space-time dependent object, right? No, of course you you look for the vacuum, which it's like vacuum. You right. you, you right. look for right. translation and right. invariant vacuum. And my question was: d mu phi squared kinetic term also in loops can get a correction. 
it can be d mu phi squared times some function of phi. I agree, but uh, that's what I say. You, you carefully write the whole action okay. as function of delta phi. Then you start integrating. Then you observe these graphs and you will see what happens. But of course, at the, at the end, you have to put them uh, translational invariant, not depending on if I understand your question. So I, I think it's all quite orthodox, this kind of consideration of what is flat vacuum. This values for z are exact or this is approximation? Approximation, yeah, you, you solve this, this system of equations. You mean these uh, exact numbers is not approximation, 0, 5, 9? No, of course it's appro approximation. This is an algebraic system which has, yeah, of course you, it scales, you, ca you can put 1, z, 4, for example, to minus 1, the rest you... Couple yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> it's approximation. It's on computer, but this is unique num. Now these are unique numbers. Solutions of this system with z4 equals to minus one. Okay. Now, um, what kind of physical quantities we consider here? Uh, various uh, in this bischalar the theory, various local operators and their correlators. And, uh, uh, so this is the most general operator containing fields, their uh, conju uh, Hermitian conjugates in various powers, the derivatives, and then you can, of course, make permutations under the trace. Um, so spectrally, for example, without derivatives, it looks like a uh, single trace, uh, the fields phi 1 under single trace, and a couple of fields phi 2, for example. Uh, which we call magnons. It looks like a spin chain picture. And phi so phi 1 creates a vacuum and phi 2 create there are two magnons, two excitations. Uh, for correct choice of these combinations, for, operator, uh, for operators diagonalizing the, uh, the dilatation operator, we get particular dimensions, which we want to con compute. This is the spectrum of the theory, spectrum of anomalous dimensions and we want to compute it. Um, the simplest possible operator is just trace phi 1 to the L, vacuum. In, in this theory, the vacuum is not, um, uh, not protected, no supersymmetry, so uh, the, anom the renormalization of this operator is given by the, this wheel graph. So that I at the center is this operator, and then according to the fishnet rules, since we have particular orientations of propagators, this is the only graph at each order of perturbation theory which we can draw. Uh, so everywhere, instead, in, uh, apart from the center, everywhere it's a regular square lattice, as it should be. Uh, then if we compute this graph, we have uh, some, uh, in epsilon expansion, we have some divergency. The power of divergency corresponds to the number of frames here, the highest power. Then by standard rules, we can recalculate it to the dimension of this operator, which is a combination of these coefficients. And in this way, we can generate... <laughs> no log epsilon? No log epsilon? No, no. Never. 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 It's specially done, specially done to avoid logs, yes, epsilon Never. expansion. Mm, okay, then there are interesting generalizations. This is sort of a vacuum. Uh, it's called wheel diagram, but there are also kind of multi-spiral or spider web di diagrams, as, as I call them, for when you have a couple of uh, so uh, when you have a, uh, a couple of magnons, then they start turning around because it's the only possible kind of vertices. So it's multi multi spiral configuration, which is also integrable. Um, okay, and in principle, dimensions the dimensions of this theory can be computed by the this machine integrability machinery, which was has been developed in uh, n equals four super Mills, including gamma deformation. But you have to go to this special limit, uh, double scaling limit. And I wanted to take a little bit of time to remind the, uh, the general uh, uh, integrability, uh, the, the result for, ten, uh, for integrability of spectrum of anomalous dimensions in n equals 4 super young mills, because in my opinion, now 
I need two transparencies to explain this. Uh, uh, so now it's about the quantum spec spectral curve, the method which we developed after long development of integrability in n equals four young mills in ADS CFT. Uh, the final method we developed is called quantum spectral curve, uh, including gamma twist. And uh, here is how it looks like, because maybe for mathematicians, it should be an interesting object. I feel it. Um, so, uh, CFT four, no? it is no five. Everything is five. It is CFT four. Oh, sorry, four of course. N equals four young mills, four dimensional. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it is five for CFT four. I probably copied it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, uh, quantum spectral curve is an an object which involves a set of finite number of Baxter, so-called Baxter functions of spectral parameter u. These functions are labeled by specific multi-index, and here how they look like for JL, JLN symmetry. For example, JL2, uh, you have Q empty set, uh, Q naught, let's call, which is usually just one normalization. Then you have two uh, Baxter functions, which are usually the solution of second order Baxter equation. And then you have Q12, uh, which is the Vronsky of these two. Uh, then if you go to GL3, you have three neighbors of G0, uh, of Q0. Uh, and uh, then you have, say, you continue from Q3 to, uh, and from Q1 you get Q13. Which, runs, which is again a Vronskian, et cetera, et cetera, up to, up to the opposite uh, corner of this cube. And then for GL4, it will be a hypercube uh, with maximum four indices. Yeah, exactly. This is a single hyperindex multi index uh, notation, right? Because usually you, one is having a J, I is like J, so, you, so that you can find the full correspondence to which, uh, which it goes. No, here everything is prescribed by these labels, I would say. It's quite usual notation for Hasse diagram, the ordered sets, uh, okay. where you have no, uh, in any index you cannot have equal, equal, num uh, equal digits, yes? But, uh, so, uh, Hasse diagrams for JLN groups represent an hypercube. Now, uh, we also have some structure on these Q functions. Uh, if we draw main diagonal from Q0 to Q uh, full set, then um, the Q functions are related by Plücke relations. So if you have, say, uh, a phase here, then on this phase, al along this direction, uh, the product of these two functions is the Vronskian of that two. Vronskian with these shifts of spectral parameter. And in this way you can, knowing for example single index functions around uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 for example, uh, uh, neighboring for Q empty set, you can restore all other Q functions. There are determinant function formulas which restore all of them. Uh, this induces a Grassmannian structure on, uh, on the set of Q functions. And so this is more or less the description, the full description of, al of the algebraic structure, except yeah, we need GL8, more or less, where you have 256. So you need GL4 <coughs> slash 4. You'll see. Uh, so we start from this GL8 system, uh, where this red axis shows where, how these uh, Plücke relations are directed, the flow of Plücke relations. Uh, but uh, if you want to supersymmetrize it to make GL4 slash 4, you simply, I mean, it's, it depends on where you take your boundary conditions. Uh, for spin chains, for example, you take Q0 equals 1, and this Q is uh, U to the length of the spin chain and say single index functions are polynomials. That's enough to completely fix beta equations. 
but if you want to separate symmetrize, you simply turn, you simply start from this to that. I mean, uh, say you, for four slash four, you take this vertex, you fix it to one, and here you fix it u to the length of the system. And this is enough to formulate the supersymmetric beta equations. So you just turn it. You mean Baxter equation or beta equation or both? Beta, beta equations, Baxter, Baxter, I mean everything. You, you just write this Q, full set is equal to u to the L. That's enough. Imposing polynomial, I mean it's for JL8, but JL4 slash 4 you do the same in this direction and it's more complicated to relate this to that. The relations, Plucker relations. Equations are uh, the universal. This is a boundary condition. Mm -hmm. You look for solutions. It's specific to equal four, right? Okay. E equations. Okay. What equations? Equa Whatever e equation you write in. Plucker's, uh, Plucker's structure. I mean, this Grassmannian structure is universal, and only the sort of the boundary conditions. How to call them? Boundary conditions. Initial conditions are I different. The quantum spectral curve is some relation, right, between Qs. That's true. So you impose polynomiality and you impose uh, that, for example, this guy is equal to u to the L. And that fixes all beta roots, etc. For you can disturb all beta equations. Okay, the, but this is also a universal picture. It also should work for sigma models, uh, for integrable quantum field theories in two dimensions. And that way we can apply it to ADS, ADS5 mm, string. Uh, okay, this we dec describe the uh, algebraic structure. Let's go to analytic structure. And it's also quite simple. Uh, you have specific 16 Q functions which have nice analytic, stru uh, analytic structure on the physical sheet. So I go back to, to this Hasse diagram, then First thing we fix, as I said, uh, g4 slash 4 means that you fix here q functions, but you fix both of them to 1 in this game. So this one thing, and then you take single index functions on one side, neighbor, I mean, I blow up here the vicinity of, uh, uh, of this pole. Uh, so you have 4 plus 4 functions. Uh, mm, we call it P and Q, and also on the uh, on this opposite side we have also uh, it's they are called Hodge dual, the sort of diametrically, uh, diametrically opposite functions with upper indexes, um, and we know about them nearly everything. We know that the large U asymptotics on the physical sheet is defined by uh, Cartan charges of of the state you are considering, namely P functions, which actually describe the dynamics on S5 sphere, the R symmetry dynamics, they have this exponential factor, which, are, which is twist. So the twists explicitly are introduced here. And also you have a power-like factor, which for various Bs, it depends, uh, the, you have different combinations of signs. Everything is, is defined by group theory here, of course, by, by charges. Uh, and also, you know, th the other thing we know that there is only one single cut on the physical sheet, which goes from minus 2G to, to G, where G is the young Mills coupling. So the only place when young Mills coupling appears is in the positions of these branch points, and the only place where the twist appears is in these asymptotics. And then we have uh, also Q functions, which describe the ADS5 dynamics. Um, they have asymptotics related already to Cartan's of conformal group. And they have also the same two branch points, but long cut going uh, around infinity. And that's it. And then we have, of course, to know something about monodromy around these cuts. And the condition is also quite remarkable. Uh, it's more or less here. You relate uh, various Q functions with from here to Q functions there uh, by complex conjugation. Say Q function in this part is related to Q1 on the upper sheet, uh, on the upper uh, half plane uh, related to 
Q2 bar, which means on the lower half plane, and this is these are gluing conditions. And they are more or less Riemann Hilbert conditions which fix everything. I mean I <coughs> described the whole scheme. If you fix charges, you will find discrete spectrum of anomalous dimensions, and uh, there have been many uh, it's already quite heavily used, this scheme, the, uh, uh, the quantum spectral curve. There are many results obtained, very precise numerics for anomalous dimensions, for essentially all interesting couplings, for example, for Konishi and similar operators. Konishi uh, operator is like for S equals to L equals two here. Uh, strong coupling expansion, then uh, Konishi dimension perturbatively. I mean, it's um, uh, up to it's known up to eleven loops, but uh, only the size of computer, uh, the computer strength, uh, is needed to go further. Huh? There was a zeta with subindex of this the value of Riemann zeta. Function. Yeah, everywhere zeta zeta functions here. Everything everything is expressed through zeta uh, zeta uh, Riemann zeta uh, numbers. And there is a. He was asking why there are only odd arguments. Ah, only odd arguments because uh, even zeta functions are trivial, like pi. Yeah. Uh, there is also non-integer numbers, you know. That's true. That's true. Well, I mean, real numbers, not all of them are integer. Uh, uh, but here, here they are. Yeah, there are only odd functions. That's true. The same thing happens for XXX correlations. XXX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can remember it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, also, for example, this beautiful picture of analytic continuation of this operator with respect to the spin obtained by Gromov and co-authors. And numerics here for quantum spectral curve works, like you can get 50 digits after the comma or 100 digits in no time. It's really Exact. Uh, still, I still have a question. In this long expression, you have z capital with three indices. Oh, I forgot. It's some. Uh, uh, it's some. Uh, some uh, also some zeta numbers, but uh, I forgot how it's defined. It's. No. Uh, we should ask the authors uh, of this eleven loop calculation, Dima Wolin, but uh, it's all in the same class of. Also, it's kind of generalizations of Riemann zeta, but I forgot which. Well, zeta values, there is like a zeta with two arguments, multiple zeta values. Y you do have, of course, multiple zeta values here everywhere. Uh, uh, this is multiple zeta values. But zeta oh. is something else, right? Uh, yeah, it's something else, but I forgot you what. I should have. And zeta values. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Going to connect with you. Compute with a huge number of digits, and then you use some program to rewrite it as a combination of. Not here, not here actually. Here it's really a quantum spectral curve. You generate, you generate these numbers. There is a way to generate. But there is also this, uh, this uh, dirty method, like fitting these integers to, <laughs> to with zeta, with the whole basis of zeta function. It's not meant to. It's not meant to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done it smaller. Topological recursion? <laughs> Not that I know, but maybe it does. Uh, like in matrix models. It's slightly more complicated, the object, but it might have something to do with it. Um, the, at least Einar always says that it should have, but <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, okay, and uh, some res already some results in the fishnet limit. Uh, I mean, this is exact uh, for, for the f n equals four, uh, but for fishnet limits, uh, for example, for this operator, we compute directly the graphs. What is nice, since at each other you have one single graph, you compute directly Feynman graphs, very complicated Feynman graphs, uh, using spectral curve. So some res essentially for this operator, we obtain second order Baxter equation by scaling, double scaling the quantum spectral curve and work psi, uh, the coupling, uh, this uh, fishnet theory coupling enters here. And uh, then there is uh, these gluing conditions. 
boil down to some quantization conditions between two solutions, which are called Q2 and Q4 by some historical reasons here. And, that's, and also you have asymptotics defined by charges. Uh, and uh, you solve, you can solve it numerically or generate the perturbation theory in Xi and uh, it gives exact values of these graphs or rather it's called periods of these graphs because the graphs themselves are diverging. Um, so here are some results, also a lot of zeta, zeta numbers. Um, mm, and the what was known before quantum spectral curve is the first line. This can be compu computed by hand. This one was a, a, a f quite a, a complicated calculation by Panzer at all. Uh, but then you see you can have 12 loops, for example, in no time using uh, quantum spectral curve on computer, of course, here already. Okay, and numerics is quite precise and it shows, for example, the anomalous dimension, uh, it is real up to some What's point when it becomes complex. What's complex. The basis? Uh, uh, yeah, it's, you see, it's real part of dimension as a function of uh, Xi, uh -huh, okay. of coupling. This is imaginary part. So imagine it stays zero up to some bridge, uh, up to some critical coupling where it becomes complex, which is normal for non-unitary theory. Okay, so actually the generalization to any number of spokes of these wheels is possible, but uh, it's some work, which already I think is done for four spokes, but would be nice to, to get some uh, idea for any number of spokes. And What's magnons? What's magnons? What are magnons? What is magnon? Where is ma ah, magnons, uh, spiral graphs. You remember I inserted some phi 2. Uh, you, you have phi 1, uh, phi 1 fields which create vacuum. And if you insert phi 2, so this picture is already so not phi this phi wheel picture anymore, but spirals. And for spirals, uh, for magnons, you also can, it's also an. It's phi 2 insertion, right? Magnons. Yes, yes. But the graph completely changes, changes to this spi multi-spiral. You can col compute these multi-spiral graphs. Okay, now um, the theory can be generalized to any dimension. It doesn't have any more. <coughs> it's uh, uh, it's four dimension. It's uh, supersymmetric mother theory. But simply directly, you write this section. Uh, you simply Laplacian. Uh, you put here Laplace phi bar Laplace and phi one, but Laplace is on power delta. For another field, it should be d over two minus delta to make it conformal with the same interaction with the same Feynman graphs, and also conformal theory. So g capital is the dimension of the space time, and delta, delta is any actually any uh, uh, any power. If you take delta over four, it will be any real number. Uh, same, Less any real number? No, but better to make it between zero and d over two. The delta is small. Yes, it's. On the equivalent spin chain, it will be sp the spin on the side, uh, on each side, the value of the conformal spin on each side. So you have this kind of propagators, the fishnet graph, and and actually, if you want to uh, to solve this problem, you can start <coughs> from writing uh, uh, such graph in terms of, uh, say, for periodic boundary conditions, in terms of so-called graph building operator. So this is uh, a set of a product of propagators and here is the picture you have propagators going in this direction of field say phi, phi 1 and in this direction of field phi 2. This is an operator which projects the coordinates of the dimensional space here to the axis to y's sort of spins. Oh, is it d over 2 there or d has to be even or the power has to be any power, you can, it can be even one. continuous. <laughs> it will be one, for example? Uh, for one, yeah, you can have so one in principle. The the one it makes sense also, one dimensional model. Small it was one. used, uh, actually, the similar model was used in uh, SYK. Right, so. two matrix uh, model quantum mechanics. 
Two matrices, one dimension. Yeah. Answer is no. no? Uh, two matrices. If you are expert of it, two matrices. <laughs> Yeah, but it's non-linear quantum mechanics. I, I said that it's uh, for many physical quantities you can uh, you can compute something in this theory. What is quantum mechanics? You solved it a lot long ago, right? I mean, no, but it's not the same. There are many uh, different quantum mechanics mm, with two fields, with two matrices. It's not so simple. Not one matrix, not equal one, but two. Fields. That's true, but uh, not every two matrix model is solvable. This one I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you have to have different methods to solve it. But it's integrable for sure. Any D is integral model. Okay, then you can then build the, uh, for example, the periodic cylindric lattice by taking the square of this operator, simply integrating over intermediate, intermediate vertices. Uh, op, sorry. Uh, then you can take next one, it will be the cube of this graph building operator, etc. And what happens, it appeared to be the conserved charge for conformal SO2, D spin chain. So in fact, this operator, this graph building operator is simply one of the conserved charges of Hamilton, of uh, Heisenberg spin chain with this non mm, uh, non compact group. And the spins are in principle series representation here. Uh, an interesting limit is delta going to zero and d equals to two. It actually boils down to Lipatov model of Regine's gluons, famous BFKL. So this is one of conserved charges of BFKL, oh, of Lipatov's Lagrangian. So things are interrelated. How much? Five minutes. I will. There, will, there have been many questions. I will take <laughs> slightly more. Six. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, now, now it's uh, next to the last topic. Uh, we managed to construct for this spin, ch spin chain, for this no, uh, conformal spin chain, we managed to construct the thermodynamic bit tangents, which calculates fishnet anomalous dimensions in principle for any operators, but let's start from the simplest ones from these wheels. Uh, so again, we take uh, these multi-magnon operators. We have M magnons and L, the length of, uh, of the spin chain. Uh, these are the representatives, the multi-spiral. If you have magnons and uh, this wheel operator with zero magnons. Uh, and you see this picture repeats in each sector. If you, uh, you take by this propagators take, uh, drawn by bold, if you repeat in all sectors, you will build the, uh, the wheel. So it's another graph building operator represented by this object, which I I've drawn here, uh, I've uh, written here. And if you diagonalize it, so if you have this operator, you simply have to take the power of this operator. So if you diagonalize it, you calculate uh, the, uh, you can calculate the corresponding f mm, configuration for Feynman graph. So let's try to diagonalize this operator. And uh, if you have only, uh, n is the number of these propagators. If you have only one, like n equals one, it's very easy to diagonalize it by, the, by just conformal properties. It's a power times some spherical harmonics. And here is the eigenvalue, which already depends on a specific parameter, on arbitrary parameter u, which, which will become very soon the spectral parameter. So you just diagonalize this kind of object. You diagonalize it by, by wave function integrating here, and this kind of picture. Um, now, if we go further for n equals two, everything becomes more complicated and it's a real challenge because already without integrability, you would never solve this problem probably. You diagonalize, I mean, 
Suppose it's only one, two, and there is no this upper part. So th this is the image of of this graph building operator. We managed to construct using, of course, some interesting papers, two-dimensional papers of uh, Derkachev, Monashov et al. We managed to generalize it to, uh, to, to actually find the eigenfunction, which consists of various uh, propagator with, I don't want to <laughs> explain every detail here. It's just a bunch of uh, propagators of the type modulo x to the power to the powers which are just presented here, which consists of deltas, etc. L is the spin. Here, so we have here already two coordinates and two spins. And uh, the eigenvalue as it should be an integrable system is the product of those eigenvalues. And what is interesting, when you take when you, for this quite complicated function, uh, I forgot to say that you integrate over these two points, you integrate here. So it's a complicated integral. If you uh, study the asymptotics for these points on a very big distance, you recover sort of a scattering theory where the coefficient, the scattering phase, is uh, or dr matrix of the Molochikov, precisely, depending on spectral parameters and spins. So already it smells like integrability. And if you go to any n, you can use this two magnon block to, to actually to generalize it to any n. Uh, say you can generalize to any number of, these are like spins. So you can generalize to any number of these spins. And the uh, lambda will be a product of eigenvalues and this u1, u2, et cetera, un are supposed to be separated variables of Sklanin in principle. Uh, okay, so this we can really... Uh, Sergeant, how would you treat the sample integral of this case? The, the last case, how would you treat the sample? Because this integral? Two integrations, yes, no, but in the end case, arbitrary. In the last case, yes. Ah, it will be many, many integrals. It will be sort of a triangular, a triangular lattice uh, filled by all these squares. Yeah. So it's more and more integrations. But uh, in the asymptotics, it's supposed to be just factorizable in terms of two, two particle ma uh, matrix. OK, and then th we go through standard scheme by Alyosha Zamolochikov, uh, the trick where we treat the finite system uh, in terms of ter thermodynamic beta and zats. Maybe I, I don't want to go into details. At the end, we write the TBA for uh, a TBA and uh, the corresponding Y system. So the anomalous dimension gamma is given through a set of Y functions. Uh, y functions uh, obey uh, Y system with this specific O to uh, O D O D comma two uh, diagram. Uh, uh, y system diagram and uh, okay the details are not so important but what is nice you can also um, do the particle hole transformation here and uh, this model appears to be dual to another model sigma model which has the homologic of O D comma two uh, uh, actually the homologic of D plus two as matrix and um, it's supposed to describe uh, the ADS uh, D plus one sigma model. Uh, but the S matrix is the same as the Molochikov, but uh, okay, there is Y system on, uh, behind it. Uh, but the dispersion relation for one Magnon dispersion relation is quite different. It has this brilliant zone structure. You have sine square P over two and uh, Mm, instead of uh, this uh, standard Einstein, uh, Einstein uh, dispersion, you get uh, massless, uh, I mean, gapless, uh, gapless spectrum. Then uh, mm, the particle hole corresponds to filling, not the, uh, the, the filling infinite Fermi C, instead of this one, you, f you feel the outer part, parts of this 
And okay, now I'm actually I'm almost finished. And uh, we reproduced in this way the asympto exponential asymptotics of large, large, large fishnet, fishnet graphs, which were observed already by Zemolochikov in, in any dimension. Okay, uh, I don't then speak about four-point function. This is only one transparency. So we can calculate interesting four-point function functions and really generate the structure constants and and uh, uh, the spectrum of conformal dimensions is given <coughs> by this formula for exchange <coughs> operators. Uh, but the Dixon type correlators computed explicitly in two dimensions. Bucks and Dixon computed them in four dimensions. And finally, uh, so I finish by saying that uh, Fishnet CFT is a unique opportunity to study non-supersymmetric quantum conformal world at any coupling. And it may give a, an, an, a window into origins of ideas CFT integrability. Uh, in addition, also the physics of flat vacuum of uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking can be studied. And we, we want to obtain the full quantum <coughs> spectral curve description of all operators of the theory in principle, um, compute various structure constants, which some of them were computed by Bass et al. Uh, Kleinin separated variables. Uh, and there was a very interesting set of papers which claimed that they found the ADS dual to uh, ADS dual uh, of fishnet CFT. Uh, of Gromov and Sever, they call it fish chain because they have sort of discrete string uh, which lives on ADS, which is supposed to, to be the ADS dual. It's uh, still uh, I mean, in discussion whether it's a real ADS dual. Then the last thing is there are very nice, there, is, there are very nice uh, fishnet amplitudes which are just pieces of square check checkered paper which you cut out and they uh, then the external legs appear and you have explicit Youngian symmetry you can construct from uh, Lux operator taking its product around the boundary you can have absolutely explicit and well-defined Youngian symmetry which we observed uh, some time ago that's it thank you If you take this fishnet theory and say you compute the four-point amplitude, how many channels do you sum over? Is it polar order that you have only S and D channel or you also have a U channel? Wait, it's four dimensions, so... Yeah, so just because it seems like it's an ordered theory. Ah, yeah, it's of course color order. So it's color order, so all your diagrams are color ordered. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Probably S and T, yes. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you have to consider finite n. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and ask a new one. <laughs>